because I can see the drone from pretty much anywhere I set up at because it's so high. I can see it so far away. I can maintain a good connection. That was just, you know, it, it made the flight a breeze. For over five years, Rock Robotic has partnered with over a thousand clients worldwide, completing over 30,000 jobs from quick turnarounds to the most complex projects. We specialize in aerial and drone LiDAR hardware and software backed by our Rock Pro Services team, processing over a million acres of data with expert QC QA for precise, high quality results. Based in the US, our industry leading customer success team works as an extension of your crew hands-on from the first flight to final deliverable. No matter the scale or challenge, we're by your side, ensuring you capture the exact data you need to succeed. Davey Johnson, welcome. Thank you for flying the Ultra for the Rock Ultra demo tour. We appreciate you. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Glad to hear from you guys. Awesome. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your work, and the project site you chose to fly the Ultra demo for? We're a survey company in Central Florida, uh, more towards the West Coast, near you know a little north of Tampa. But we we work all over Florida, uh, really, and um, we've impl implemented drone lidar the past few years into our survey company's workflow, and it's it's opened up a lot of doors for us. It's it's pushed our company forward into uh, we can provide a lot a lot better level of service to our clients and um, provide the, the type of data that, um, that most of our clients have didn't, didn't know existed. So um, we've been able to, to really uh, expand in, in a good way over that. So, um, so we've, been, we've been using various rock robotic systems for the last couple of years and seeing the progression of, you know, we, we started with an R2A and then we got the R, actually we got an R360 um, then got the R3 Pro and, and now <clears throat> excited to see, to use this, uh, rock ultra demo that you guys came out with here. So anyway, uh, yeah, it's really helped push our company forward. We've, um, we've done a lot of, of projects at this point using the LiDAR. It's kind of, it's basically an indispensable tool at this point to, to our company. Um, and it's, it's been good. Yeah, we, we definitely see a lot of jobs on our end coming through from you. So I, I'd say that um, you taking over that division has been quite a success, especially from what I've seen on my end. The, the, the project that you, apps, that you flew with the Ultra, um, I'll ask you, why, why did you choose that, these specific job sites? We're going to talk about two out of the three data sets you flew today, the first one and the third one. Um, what was the main reason you chose for testing those sites? Okay, well, I've actually gotten real comfortable with the data that comes from my R3 Pro, and uh, and so a couple of these sites, uh, two of the actually all three of them, I've also flown with the R3 Pro, and so I, for one, I wanted to compare the data sets to see how we're looking. Um, I can directly compare. Rock Cloud allows me to mesh the two, overlay the two data sets together, and mesh them and compare the two clouds. So. That was one thing I wanted to do with it. Also, um, I wanted to fly some typical, typical sites that we might do. One of them was uh, large. I think it's about 300 acres, and um, <clears throat> a lot of it's pretty thick vegetation. A lot of creeks, creek beds that flow through it, um, and it goes down toward down, and they all flow into a lake. It's on the site, uh, so I wanted to see. If I could, what kind of uh, penetration I can get through the canopy, and and can we really get to the bottom of those those creek beds to get to the toe of slope, and make sure we're getting the, the as 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 much penetration through the vegetation as we could possibly get. So that was one of the the sites that I flew um, that I wanted to test it on. Another one was a construction site that we've been working on. It's a uh, it's halfway built. Um, we've been flying it about once a month to monitor the, the progress of the site, to check dirt volumes and make sure that the, <clears throat> the pad elevations are, are being built uh, correctly. We've been using it for as-built data on that site um, along the way. What really stood out to you the most about that point cloud data 
um, from your ultra flights? Oh, uh, well, I, I, honestly, the biggest difference here is <laughs> when you zoom out and see how many flight lines there are. If you look at any of my other uh, data sets, there'll be uh, two or three times as many flight lines because it, ta it takes me two or three times as long to get it done. So, and those, you know, those, that flight path is much higher. So the, that's obviously the biggest difference is uh, how much higher I can fly and, and accomplish. That was, I don't know, I think that was like a, a 12 minute flight to get that, that entire site done. It was a extremely fast. Um, and then also if you, when you zoom in on it, um, one of the things that I wanted to see is when you fly along that roadway out to the West, um, I wanted to see how that, uh, how that curb data is being picked up. Now that's not exactly, I'm not exact. I don't, that's all existing curbs. So, I don't actually need that for as built, but I did want to compare that to our original survey because we've actually surveyed that entire road, uh, both with LIDAR and conventional uh, survey data. So um, I, I, I'm going to be able to overlay that over my existing survey data and, and see how it's looking. So we'll talk a little bit more about the data, uh, but in regards to from field to finish, how did using the Ultra affect your entire workflow? Um, so obviously the, the, the first difference is the amount of time that I had to spend on the site, much less. Um, if, if you'll notice on this one, uh, there's, no, there's no battery swaps because I was able to fly this entire site really quickly. Are you able to see how many acres that is um, quickly on, on there? I think you might have to oh, 188. Yeah, 188 acres. Um, and then this one was 17 minutes to capture this. Particular right. Set. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a, just that 188 acres in 17 minutes is nuts. Um, and that's including the, the, I, I'm assuming that's including the, uh, the calibration flight too, the calibration pattern as well. And um, so, so that's the first big difference is, a lot less time on site. I can I can show up, send the drone up from one place. I don't have to I don't have to wrestle with trying to find a good a good uh, spot to to control the drone from because I can clearly see that just about anywhere I set up will be a good spot because because of the range um, capabilities. So it's just a lot that makes it a lot faster. Speaking of you know surveyors and being on the job site 17 minutes for 188 acres how long would it take for a traditional surveying crew to be able to capture this job site that's tough um so car carving through the woods uh when we have to when we have to carve through the woods like that um I'm going to say a site like that would probably getting enough ground shots out there would probably be at least three days. And then we'd still be only left with like a 50 foot grid of ground shots. So, um, you know, that it not only, not only is it getting it done a lot faster, but also the data is much more complete. There's no, we didn't miss a ditch. We didn't, we didn't, like I said, miss a shed. There's, Everything that's on the ground is in that data set. Yeah, there's a consistency there to the data versus being out in the field on foot. And you said the expression carving through the woods. I, I would assume that at times that's quite literal <laughs> to get through. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, exactly. <laughs> yep, tools of the trade when every new hire gets his brand new machete. And, uh, <laughs> I had a feeling that that was the case, Davey. <laughs> so thank you for uh, <laughs> the yeah. visual there on that one, that big, nice, heavy machete whacking away at the weeds and uh -huh. uh, the vegetation there to kind of get through. Davey, if you could talk a little bit about the post-processing aspect of your ultra data, how did it feel using the Rock Desktop and Rock Cloud for your deliverables? Um, well, so Rock Desktop is an amazing tool. Uh, and it, everything about the, the Rock Robotics uh, uh, 
virtual or digital environment is is excellent. Um, you know that, like I said, the, all the tools that we need and nothing we don't need in Rock Desktop um, is there, and it makes it super uh, user friendly, very easy to understand what you're doing with the data, um, and you can you can fine tune the data. You can you can uh, you know you can smooth it if you'd like, or like me, typically on a site like this. I don't like to smooth the data because I need I need to make sure that I'm getting absolute bottom ground penetration, uh, especially in a site like that. There's um there's actually high uh, uh, there's grass, and that's actually grass. Thick grass is is the most dangerous thing about using lidar, is because it it sees under the canopy really well, but when you're looking at the noise in the grass right there. Um, ensuring that you are getting the actual ground and not, not some mat of grass is critical. So, um, that was, that's actually another benefit of, of this system being those multiple returns, additional returns is helping me get through to the, to the actual ground level. Um, and then also, uh, because of the tools in rock desktop, you guys, you guys have the ability to. We, we have the ability to make sure that we're utilizing that data and not smoothing it. Um, so, and then, you know, of course, uploading it to, to rock cloud for deliverables is, is always great. Um, you guys, you guys are able to provide, uh, excellent deliverables for me, um, consistently over and over again. We've, we've used, we've used a lot of rock pro services over the last couple of years. Davey, talk to me about accuracy. So there's there's a the, really when you talk about accuracy, the way that we use the lidar is there's two different things that we do here. One is um, or two different ways that we use the lidar data. Um, one is to is to survey you know large areas where uh, we're we're getting you know vegetation penetration, uh, a lot of dirt. Um, basically, in the survey world, we call them soft shots. Um, uh, shots that that need to be within the tolerance of one tenth or better. So that's where the lidar data really shines for us, and that's where it, it accomplishes most of our. Uh, it it replaces a lot of the legwork that we would previously be doing manually. Um, so as far as accuracy um, in those large scale areas like that, where we're getting all soft shots, it's absolutely incredible. Now. Also, when you're talking about um, trying to get your tolerance even tighter than that, that's when we're, we're using it to fly a little bit lower, a little bit slower. We're trying to get those curbs and, and uh, asphalt and show the crown of the roads, um, catch basins and uh, other you know sidewalks, um, stuff like that, uh, those building pads there. For that, for that type of stuff, we would be trying to get better even better accuracy um so in the, those use cases we'd be flying a little bit a little bit lower and slower and then making sure that our our ground control points are uh low that are are, are set to low tolerance so that we're making sure that that our light lidar data is extremely accurate and we're getting down uh under a tenth uh, of, of tolerance for that stuff if you had to sum up your ultra experience in one statement or phrase, Davey, what would it be? Uh, fast. Yeah, it makes, uh, it makes surveying fast, fast and accurate.